Hey guys, Brozan here. Today we are going to rehash the uh, joining the boating community video. Uh, last time we did it, it's been almost eight months ago. A lot of things, little things have changed. Uh, the meta has shifted a little bit on the PVM characters. And also, really big thing, the old video featured a boat bot, which is no longer a thing that exists. So I wanted to redo this video, have something to where we could share this with the community as new members join and get into boating. Um, obviously, the best thing you can do to get into boating is have friends who do it, but getting out there, getting started alone, there's a lot of systems, a lot to worry about, and hopefully this will help bridge that gap some. So the very, very first thing I want to talk about is the best character to take out as a captain of a boat. You will be told, oh, that can do it. That You can do it on a Dexter. You can do it on a Mage. You can do it on a Tamer. Anybody can boat. Um, the question is, how well can you boat? The best template is a Poison Mage. I'll bring up my Echo here real quick and we'll look at it. Uh, this is the meta template. You can swap out wrestling for tracking, um, for spirit speak. That's the most movable skill. Meditation's pretty required on this build. Uh, while we do things in bursts, having the ability to met up between boats without having to actively med meditate, it's very important because you're constantly moving. So this is the skill template. Uh, it's obviously using full poison aspect and our chain should be a mix. This is on desk, so this is an old chain, but it should be a mix of ship cannon damage and damage on ships. Uh, you usually want to shoot for about 15% ship cannon damage. Realistically, um, it, it's just important to bump up both of these. Once you have 10 of each, you want to start going for damage to poisoned creatures. So that's what our character itself looks like. Um, first thing we're going to do once we have a character made is get a boat. So I'll, I have another video out there of how to create a boat, what stats you're looking for. I'm not going to go about that in depth, but uh, you will build a boat and then you're going to come to a dock master. You will add it to the dock master system, left click dock master, dock ship, and then hit add ship deed and target the ship in your backpack. You do not ever want to go anywhere with a boat in your bag unless you're in your house and you know it's safe or you're in shelter. You should get it on the dock master. You can do everything you want to on the dock master gump. So don't ever have a ship in your backpack ever. Once our ship is on the water, we've gone to our dock master, dock ship, we hit launch and target the water. Our boat is out and it's ready to be launched. What we're going to do is get on our boat. Generally, you're going to want to script this. I'll show you a um, bit of what my script looks like, but you'll want this to be customized to you. So you will want to double click your Tillerman and then you will want to hit embark. Next thing you're going to want to do is reload the boat. That way we get our cannons with ammunition in them. So I've opened the ship hot bars. I do that later in the script, but uh, get our ship hot bars up. We can see we've got zero and zero. It's the first thing we want to do, reload our cannons. Now it, he says, I'm reloading cannons. And if you try to fire your cannons, you'll get a message saying you have this long before you can fire them. Once our cannons are up, we want to get our crew above decks. You can do all of these things with say commands. And like I said, you should hotkey this stuff. Um, but you can do it in the gump. I'm going to say crew get up. Uh, we want to, once we've got that, we're good. The rest of my script just sets some variables. It's really good to have this status bar set as a variable so you can easily click it. So my script in action clicks on that and jumps on the ship. Next thing you're going to want to do, so you're brand new to boating, you've gotten out here, um, you'll see this little navigation gump. It's right, turn, 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 turn. 
left. Stop in the middle means just stop motion, forward, back. Pretty simple. It's always based on the direction the front of your ship is facing. So if I push forward, I'm going to, I'm going towards the front of the ship. You should hotkey these movement abilities. People recommend different hotkeys. Mine are Shift A S D W and X, and then Q and E are my side to side movements. Realistically, when you're out, you want to be going forward, forward right, or forward left as much as possible. Those are your fastest movement. You move slower left, right, and you move slowest back. It is faster to completely turn around and drive than it is to trawl backwards. Once we have, once we're comfortable with movement, and you should really, really do this on test. Get on test, spawn a Carrick, get out there and just get comfortable with it. So we talked about movement keys. Next thing we want to get familiar with is just what a good boat to get started with is. So most people will suggest get out there on a large. The sink cost is negligible. It's a learning experience. I don't agree with that advice. I think everybody should start on a Carrick. Larges are good for PVP, and at the extreme end of the uh, PVM spectrum, when you've got a full chain, they can be good again for PVM. They are not good for getting started. A Carrick sink fee costs you about 40,000 doubloons. That's expensive. You'll make that in about 15 minutes. So it, it's, a, it's a more expensive start, in my opinion, but it is worth it to not have a boat that you're going to pretty quickly grow out of. It, I'm talking a day, two days. So my advice, start with a Carrick. Watch my boat video on what stats you should be looking for. And uh, let's talk about next thing we're going to do. So you should have spy glasses on you. Um, I'm on test, so I have the best. Realistically, you want at least an Agapite spyglass. Um, I run Verite or Valorite, but I'm also end of the spectrum, um, top end farming. At least run Agapite spyglasses. They make you see further, the better quality the spyglass is. Exceptional does not matter. Don't waste your materials. What I do is I start a script or a crafting queue and I just make it 50 to 100 in a box. Um, exceptionals sometimes go to my shelf to feed my map decoder, but ex exceptional means nothing to range. So we will take our spyglass, we will bring it up, we will hit ourself, and then we will hit search for ships. We have a ship on track. It is northeast of us, so it's over this way. This button, the spyglass button, creates a tracking arrow to the boat. This arrow, uh, we might have got some lag there. Let our lag run out. This bottom arrow shows you actually where it is on the map. You'll Once you've done this for a while, you'll almost never use this bottom one except to see if stuff's on the other side of islands from you. Set it to track, and now we can see down here we are 77 steps from the boat that we want to go to. So we've got our crew up. We have a ship on track. We need to get up pets because this is a... Hang on, 10 seconds for some reason. I don't have a necromancy bar. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Sorry about that. Open hot bar. We changed echo. That's what it is. So we want to get up a... We want to get up two Earth Elementals. Um, keep in mind, I'm talking about the meta build here. So we're bringing two Earth Elementals just as tanks. Ancient mummies. They're going to do almost no damage. They're just here to soak some hits. We got up our health bars. We got up our pets. We're going to buff ourselves. Make sure... This isn't as important. I like to run um, Arc Protection and um, all the buffs. But buff ourselves. 
Protection is neat in that it targets your crew as well, so it makes your crew tankier, which means less healing of your crew through abilities or through pilgrims. So we've got our boat on track. You don't have to ever push the track button itself again, but you should be hitting your spyglass very often. We want to make sure there's not other boats. A red boat means that it will attack you on sight. This is a NPC boat. It will attack you as soon as it is on screen with you and it's recognized you. A, a golden yellow boat on this tracking gump means that it is a non-hostile NPC. So you'll see tradesmen or explorers or fishermen. Those are boats that you can get up right next to and they won't fire on you until you fire on them. The other type of boat on this is a gray boat. A gray boat is an, another player that is not a guild or ally. Um, also, there's an oddity there. If your guild or ally don't have their boat set up right, it can show up gray. But in general, gray boats mean a player that is not an ally of you. A green boat, a green boat is a guild or ally boat. So if we hit our tracking and we have a green boat here, then that is an ally that we are tracking. Again, I said to use the spyglass, double click it, click yourself, make sure it's clicked on ships. You can see the range here that you can track at. We track players at half range of NPCs, so I can see NPCs up to 132 tiles away. I can see players at 66. I have this all hotkeyed, so you'll see me push a hotkey. It clicks the glass, clicks me, and clicks search. So we've got a boat. We've gone through our tracking. We're constantly hitting that spyglass as we approach the boat. So I'm approaching the boat. I'm hitting my spyglass making sure there's not a player on that boat who's gonna be real mad when I show up. And you can see, as I got close, the boat shot at me. I was moving, I turned as it shot, and so I didn't take a lot of damage. I, I took a little bit to sails, I took a little bit to all the parts. I'm gonna come back in and I wanna show you what happens when you're kind of sitting still. See, that time I took more damage on my guns because I was sitting still and if I keep doing this you'll notice as I'm not moving at all the next shot's going to do a lot of damage. This is why people talk about why it's important to move in PvP. In PvM we're generally just going to get up next to them quickly. There he goes. See how much that hurt us? That last shot hurt us considerably, almost 10%. So we're going to pull off, um, reset this, and we'll talk about how to actually approach. Uh, let me heal myself up. I'm going to go ahead and resummon mummies because I want this to look clean. We'll talk about repairing your boat in a moment. In general, what I'm doing here is a bad idea. I'm sitting here um, with unrepaired stuff, but this is a tutorial. I want you to focus on one thing at a time. So again, we're gonna track our boat, we're gonna approach it. So as we approach this time, their first shot's gonna hit us while we're moving. It's not gonna do a lot of damage. We're gonna pull up our bars. Hotkeys are new. My hotkeys are not. Oh, I don't have a fire too. So uh, what we'll do first is we're gonna fire an ability on the boat. This is. Let's see, we're starting to break their sails, break their guns, break their hull. We want to get the sails or guns to a point where we can board their ship. 50% lets you try. Even lower lets it succeed better. So we'll shoot it again. We're going to use our abilities because this is a big boat. We want to get it down quick. We don't want to do regular cannon shot. As I'm fighting the boat, as I'm firing on it, I want to be using my abilities. I want to be casting my mage spells. So I cast Mana Dream and Mass Curse. Cannons are up again, so we need to fire our cannons again. Now watch their guns. Guns are, at this point, they're almost at 25%. So we're going to use a boarding rope. We're gonna send everything. Target ship, 
and I target on health bars. You can see, that was 94% chance of a success. I should have broken a little more. At this point, I'm boarded. I'm going to start killing the crew. I've got everything poisoned. So, poison, mass curse. Then I'm going to chain lightning, and I'm going to meteor swarm. If stuff is still alive, I'm going to flame strike it down. As soon as something dies, pain spike, and poison strike. All the crew is dead. So I'll go through that again. I went through it quickly. I want to, as I approach, fire my cannons. Um, using, generally, we'll use our greater ability first. That way it's on cooldown as it's ticking its cooldown. You can see as we're over here doing stuff. So I've fired my ability as I'm approaching the boat. Then I cast Managering, then I cast Mass Curse. Everything on the boat's cursed. Around that time, I'm going to look. I'm going to see how long until my cannons can fire again. Uh, I'm going to start poisoning the enemy crew. I'm st At this point, I'm still on my boat. I'm poisoning the enemy crew. My cannons come off cooldown. I fire another shot. I fire that shot based on how much health's left on the different parts. I'll use a different ability. And then once that shot goes off, I'll see if I can board. If if sails or guns are less than 25%, it's almost always an instant board. So we, we want to break the sails, break the guns, and we want to board the boat. As soon as I'm on board the boat, I cast Chain Lightning. I target the one that I cast Mana Drain on. Chain Lightning hits. I cast Meteor Swarm. I target the one I hit Mana Drain on again. That does a lot of area damage. Our poison's ticking down. My pets are on all guard. Always have your pets on all guard. And then I just start doing incremental damage to get something dead. As soon as something's dead, pain spike, poison strike, clean it up. So I've got everything dead. Now I'm going to go through my looting routine. Uh, very first thing you want to do as soon as things die is recall your boarding and embark your followers. You could do these... Uh, via say commands or through gumps. I don't want my deck empty any longer than it needs to be because other players can instantly board you if your deck's empty. If you see another player approaching, you need to throw your pets back over on your boat or get yourself back, get your crew back. You need to get back as soon as you see another player. So I have cleared the NPCs, I've sent my pets back. Now I'm going to start looting. I have this all hotkeyed. I'm using a skinning knife. I'm not going to go how to, through how to loot. You guys know how to loot. Grab my loot. You can see it's pretty pretty profitable to kill stuff on a boat. Grab this loot. Then we're going to open the hatch. When the last NPC on a boat dies, the hold unlocks. It gives a little system message. says the hold has unlocked. We're going to come over here, double click it, and there's more loot in here. It's treasure box generation style loot. So there will be un IDs. There can be skill scrolls. Ocean antiquities spawn in this hold. Um, you'll notice there are no doubloons in the hold. Just gold value. And then you get pirate booty. Which is used to level crew. So we loot all this. And then we go back to our own boat. We can do this via a say command. Or we can do it by the gump. We double click our status bar or our tiller man brings up our own boat scump and we hit embark. There's also a say command to do this that takes you to the closest allied boat. Now we're back on our boat. We've killed the crew on the other boat. We've looted it. There is a part of this we're going to talk about in a minute, which is sinking the other boat. We might have done things before we left. We'll talk about that in a second. The reason we came back to our boat is because this guy told me I'm clear of the fray. I need to repair. My boat is at roughly 75% of everything. You can see that with a repair kit. 80, 77, 80. I, oh, I use a repair kit from my backpack. It brings up this little gump. These can also be done with say commands. And I'm going to repair my sails. This paralyzes you it actually it's a root effect you could still cast spells while you're paralyzed you could still command stuff you could still drop stuff you can see that ticked up it told me it repaired a thousand hits i'm gonna repair my guns 
At this time, I'd be dropping loot in my own ship's hold. I'd take stuff, throw it in here. Um, I do all this via script. If you've ever watched my gameplay videos, you'll there's there's a lot of examples of how the gameplay flow goes in those videos. This video is intended to be much more um, introductory. So we're repairing as soon as we kill the other boat. You want to repair while you're outside of combat with other ships. If I am in combat with another ship, let me show you this. So I fired on this ship. That puts me in combat. And when I use a repair kit now, I am using a special type of repair that is in combat only repairs. This is, let me find where the stat is. Repair cooldown. So my repair cooldown is four minutes. Anytime I try to repair while I'm in combat, I will get this message. And it says, hey, you can't repair right now. So we've repaired our boat. A lot of times you'll sink the other boat before you repair. You don't have to repair on every ship. We're, we're, we're doing this slow. Repairing is important. You don't want to be below 50% sails or guns for the same reason. We boarded that NPC. Other players can board you. The ocean is lawless. You get seen, you get caught. You want to be at close to full. That way you got a better chance of getting away or fighting back. There's our clear of the fray that tells us we're out of combat. So, I let's go back and pretend I just now finished killing the crew. Tell my guys to get off. Now I'm going to drop a bomb. Ship bombs take 10 seconds to blow up, and they do a lot of hull damage specifically to a boat. You can only drop one at a time. You must wait a few moments. And you can see that did a lot of damage to the hull of this boat. This is the fastest way to sink other NP or to sink other ships is dropping bombs on them. The alternative is to sit here and do cannon fire on it until it sinks. Once the boat sinks, you got doubloons for sinking a ship. These go directly into your ship's hold. Now I'm ready to find another boat. I have sank my first boat. In the time it took me to do that, my cooldowns were ticking off. And so I now have my cooldowns back up. You could see I have five shots left on the left side. I'm sure there are nautical terms for this. I'm a video game player. I'm not a sailor. But the left side has five shots left. The right side has ten. If we needed to, we would reload. Reload takes a certain amount of time. My cooldown bar is not synced up with it. But... Now, I cannot shoot my cannons while they're reloading, but I have 10 on each side. So let's find another boat. We'll sail out here. This is a fishing spot, therefore, other players. Right, galleon. These are troublesome. Galleons are the tankiest ships on the ocean. Going against them as a new player is generally ill-advised, and I'll show you why. By the time I get boarded on this ship, I'm going to be busted up pretty bad. Ideally, as a new player, you should be searching for up to larges, possibly Carrix. Bring up the bars, fire off an ability. Watch your own health bar. Cast Mana Drain, Cast Mass Curse, Casting Poison, Poison all the way around, Second Ability, Casting Poison still, I've broken their guns, so I'm going to kill myself before I do anything, start casting Chain Lightning, jump on their boat, Chain Lightning, Meteor Swarm, and kill them all. Uh, See if I can do a mushroom. I can't get some of that down here. As soon as one of them drops, we're going to pain spike, poison strike, flame strike. Crew's almost dead. As soon as crew's dead, 
I like to, oh, hey, let's talk about that in a second. I like to open all the corpses first, then I'm looting while I send my crew back. Looting, looting, looting. We go over here, we loot the ship hold. Looting. Look at the health left on the hull of the boat. Has 1600. Drop our bomb. Come back to our boat. Shoot it once too, just for good measure. Drop our loot in our ship hold. And watch the boat sink. Now we're ready to find another one. Now you'll notice my cooldowns are up now. I, I don't have my Hillfire Barrage or my Powder Soak. I'm going to show you what you should never, ever, ever do. I've got no cooldowns, but I'm greedy. I'm going to go out to this Galleon. And I'm going to engage the Galleon. While I do, I'm going to talk about that crew that we got. So, you saw the yellow text as we killed off the last guy. It said, you got a crew member. I didn't do a good job of approaching. Bring up health bars. I'm going to use my arcane shot because it's the only one I've got. I'm going to start my routine. Now look at how much damage we didn't do to that hole because we don't have our abilities up. This whole time, I'm taking damage. Now I'm going to do a regular cannon shot because I don't have abilities to use. You can see I am not doing much damage at all to a regular. You can set your accuracy to different things. Say I want to break guns. Still ticking real poor, and I miss a lot more when I don't set it to accuracy. This is why I say don't ever approach when you don't have your cooldowns. You get a feeling for what cooldowns you need for a specific boat. So if I had approached a small with these cooldown situations, I would have been fine. But now we're firing powder soak. Let's look at the damage it does. It did almost 1,600 to guns, which is way way more than our regular shots would do. Make sure everything's poisoned. Even if everything isn't poisoned, you want to board as fast as you can. Because that means you're ticking down chain lightning, meteor swarm. Some stuff. Looting, send my people back. Look at how busted ass my boat is though from that. This is something you never, ever, ever want to do on the ocean. This is, I take one shot from a player and I'm done. Don't ever do this. Plus, look at how much health I have to break off of this. So, I could go over and repair here, which is probably what I would do if I had made this mistake. I'm waiting on my combat cooldown. When he says we're clear of the fray. So he says we're clear of the fray. We're going to start repairing. We'll go through our repair routine here. And then we would sink the boat. Um, at this point, we've talked about most of everything that involves the fighting itself. So I'm going to skip the repairing. I'm just going to sink the boat. Get my crew back. Don't ever bomb your own crew. They will start hitting you and that will ruin your day. You can use different abilities that make bombs less needed. You can drive away while that bomb's ticking down. So, we've killed everything. Um, we've got a decent amount of doubloons in our hold. We've almost paid for a sink on our carrot. We're going to go back to the Dockmaster now. You want to be spy glassing the whole time you're driving? We don't have anything on glass, so it's a good time to hit that reload button. You need cannon shot to reload. I didn't talk about loadout, so let's talk about that while we're sail sailing. You need ship repair kits. That's what we're using to repair. Boarding ropes. That's what we're using to jump over to NPCs. I think a skinning knife is pretty required for this. Is to take a skinning knife so you can quickly loot. 
And then you need ship cannon shot. Ship cannon shot goes into the cannons when you reload them. Ship bombs are kind of optional, not really. Uh, they are how we quickly sink boats. We've been talking about that for a while now. And then you need your regular loadout, you know, your spell book, your um, reagents, your cure pots, poison pots, all that crap. So we have gone out. We've had a good, successful run. Um, usually you're going to want to, let's see, I've been out, even with these, in 20 minutes I made 40, 40K, and I wasn't looting. So we'd probably have 40K dubs in our dock, or in our hold right now, if we had looted all the stuff on those ships. We come in, we're at the dock master, we're going to click on the dock master, we're going to hit dock ship. Now, if you are at a public dock master, um, you don't want to immediately dock your ship. If you are at a private dock master, when you dock, all the stuff in your ship's hold is going to fall at your feet. So if I push dock right here, everything underneath my feet... All right, all the stuff in here, which, you know, it's just doubloons right now from what we sank. But everything in that hold would drop down at my feet, which they get pretty heavy. You don't want to do that. So at a public dock master, you want to hit shipping crate. I don't know the house. This is on test, but shipping crates drop a shipping crate at the band location of your house. So you hit shipping crate and then you hit dock. And then you immediately recall your house and take that crate inside your house. This is what happens when you don't hit shipping crate. Everything falls to the ground and you got to find a way to get it home. So we've been out. We've successfully killed some boats. We got a crew contract on our ship. We successfully docked with our crew contract. If you saw in the... Um, Docking message, it should say that it was now available at the Salvage Master. Uh, I've got too much junk in here. I don't see it. But when you dock, it tells you that you had things go to the Salvage Master if you had upgrades. Salvage Foreman, left clicking, Salvage. And we see, oh, we got a Master Hedge Mage. This is on test, so it's probably going to be amazing. I'm going to hate it. But. Yeah, that, that was, that's, that's a million gold plus crew. So that's what I get for recruit, re, uh, recording a tutorial video today. But you get your crew, move them to your backpack, and then you are ready to go out and store them in boxes or put them on your ship. Always, actually, I did this at this guy because he was there, but always do your salvage and shelter. That way no one can steal them from you. This, these guys work in shelter. Well, guys, um, I think that about wraps up the very, very basics of starting out boating. I will try to remember to link the video about building a boat here. Please uh, feel free to contact me on Discord. I, I like doing this kind of community outreach. And have fun out there. Thank you.